Hey guys, and welcome back to Let's Play Twilight Princess. You may have seen that explosion back there. One of the ice keys decided to get frisky and come over to attack me. But of course, as we approach this hill, uh, we're going to have sort of an interesting battle. Uh, I kind of like to do this half and half as Hylian and Wolflink. Uh, mostly I like to use Hylian Link to take out the ice keys first. Because it's infinitely slower as Wolf Link, uh, Wolf Link, rather, and you leave yourself open a lot if you do that. Whereas if you use the sword, you can just move from one target to the other si uh, in quick succession. So uh, then, as a wolf, you can just use your charge attack to get rid of all three at once. So that's one of the battles where it's actually uh, pretty much easier to do it, sort of half and half. And we get a warp point here on Snow Peak, so that's really convenient too. And there's this big green luminescent creature up here. He, he seems kind of glowy for some reason. I don't know why that is. Uh, but let's turn back into a human so we don't freak the guy out. And uh, roll up here to talk to him. Oh, uh, whoa! I heard ruckus and oh, uh, just a human. I see humans on often, huh? Why human come to snows? You on spiritual journey? You look for true self? Um, no. So, fade to black, we're explaining our situation, and... Oh, you look for mirror in such faraway place, but you make good climb, and you're lucky to meet me. I found shiny mirror piece. Same mirror you look for, huh? Oh, you come to house and see yourself. I caught fish. I make you hot meal at least. My house far away. We slide there, huh? Do like me. Come. So he shoulders the tree, and this little thing falls down. This guy is just amazingly dexterous. I have no idea how he does this. <laughs> he slides down on one foot on that little ice thing, you know, manages to jump over that cliff and everything. It's pretty amazing, I gotta say. Uh, anyway, before we do this, actually, I want to take a quick sidetrack. You may uh, remember we activated a Howling Stone and it showed up in Kakariko Village. Uh, I'm gonna run to get it real quick-like. Mostly because we're, uh, we have a warp point there at Snow Peak now, you know, it can't hurt to just get all the abilities that you can. Uh, I don't actually, like, really use the one that I get here that much. The good news is, when it's nighttime, you can go through as a wolf without causing a commotion. I guess because everybody's asleep, and there's, like, crows out anyway that are considered monsters. So if you head up into the graveyard, the golden wolf is up here. Now let's just make our way through these, uh, through these headstones here. And there he is, so let's turn into a human before we get to him, because he'll tell us to otherwise. And we can start our uh, fake battle here. Alright, we meet again. There are but a few hidden skills left for me to teach you. I've warned you this before, but if you fail to execute the hidden skill I'm about to teach you, your life may be forfeit. Yeah. Uh, before we begin, we have to know that we know the mortal draw, so let's put our sword away just to take it out again. Excellent. And we're going to be learning the jump strike. I really don't find this move useful at all, mostly because it's just not really convenient as far as the range is concerned. Now let's hit A here to bypass this. Uh, jump attack, prepare your jump attack, focus power. So basically, you, you do a jump attack like normal, except you hold the A button instead of uh, just pressing it once. And this will cause you to jump forward and have sort of a small area of effect. As you can see, this guy can multiply himself somehow. And let's uh, just target one. Hold it. You gotta get pretty far back. See, that's why I don't like this move. Because you jump so far forward that you've got to be really far back for it to actually connect and be effective. And, you know, not many enemies, uh, at this stage in the game at least, will give you enough space that you can actually pull this off. So really, I don't find the jump strike that effective, but uh, I'm sure there are... I'm sure it has its uses, I just don't really <laughs> bother to look for them that much. So we've only got one hidden skill left. We're actually going to have to say goodbye to that guy soon, which is kind of sad, but... Uh, that comes with the territory, I suppose. Anyway, let's quickly warp back to Snow Peak. Which is over here. And we're gonna get to do kind of a, a fun little minigame here. Uh, I actually really enjoy this. It's pretty easy to screw up, though. Yeah, the ice keys come back. But, uh, you know, you don't have to worry about them. Just kind of dash forward. 
they'll they'll leave you alone once you get up here. And uh, we can just roll into this tree here to make our personal chunk of ice fall down, just like the Yeti did, sort of. And we get to go snowboarding, which is awesome. Let's get on. And we get to snowboard down the mountain. It's so cool. I love this. It's really easy to screw up, though. You're <laughs> uh, basically just hold the control stick forward to go faster, leave it alone to go sort of slower, and pull back to brake. Uh, I actually never brake. I pretty much just leave it on up all the time. We're going to be doing this a couple times later for uh, for a couple of things. But that won't be for a little while. So let's jump our way through here. You can swing your sword if you want try to kill some ice keys. Now, if you do this just right, you can get a ton of rupees from this jump. But, as usual, I never get it. I mean, you literally have to uh, get the angle just right on it. It's, it's pretty hard to do. Let's make our way through here. Of course, if you crash into those uh, big ice things or whatever, then you, uh, you will fall off and take damage. You get right back on, though. It's not like you lose your ice and have to, you know, start walking down. There is actually one shortcut. If you look down at the bottom left on the map, you can see sort of like a stretch of land that connects uh, between the edges of this curve. Well, that was close. Uh, and it's really hard to take, but we'll have to do it once later. So uh, you will you will see that. Don't worry. Just not right now. Oh, is it turning daytime? You've got to be kidding me. Because there's still one more Poe that I need to get. I'm pretty sure that light means it's turning daytime. Anyway, once we get uh, onto this little cement place here, here, what's with this guy? He's got a nice place for a beast man. He does, actually. So is it day? Do I see a sun anywhere? Uh, well, I'm, I'm gonna go back there anyway. I'll pretty much just show you guys where it's at, and uh, if, it's, if it is actually day, which I, I pretty much believe it is then we'll just have to wait till it's night in order to get it, because we're not really going to uh, have another chance to come back through here. That's convenient, anyway. So you kind of want to like run up along this little spiral thing here, and uh, you definitely want to do it as a wolf. In fact, I don't even know if it's possible as a human. I think you probably fall off at some point. Oh no, it's still night. Good, it's here. Oh, awesome. Okay, so here is the final puzzle that I wanted to get along the way to our next dungeon. And you get the post soul. Cool. So, uh, thankful. I don't know. It looked like it turned day because it got so much brighter, but I guess it's just uh, brighter down here than it is at the top of the mountain for some strange reason. Anyway, let's fall off here and try not to fall over the side, like over this railing, because I believe it will put you back on the top, and you'll have to snowboard down again if you uh, actually fall off. So we're at eight minutes, and we don't really have a whole lot of time, but I at least want to get you guys uh, introduced to Snow Peak Temple here. So let's just uh, kind of get the beginning of it out of the way. So this is, uh, we're going to be introduced here at some point. It's going to tell us the official name. As you can see, there's a postal out there in the middle, kind of an easy one to get. This is the Snow Peak Ruins. Uh, it's where the Yeti and uh, his wife live, actually. Uh, we're going to be meeting her here shortly. Uh, we'll probably actually do the, that in this episode, because it's pretty much the first thing you do. But first, obviously, you want to take out this postal. There we go. So this place is basically uh, like the snow dungeon. There's snow and ice everywhere. It gets to be a little annoying. Uh, a bunch of chews actually will pop down uh, out of here. And they don't really pose much of a threat though because they're not that aggressive or anything. So let's go through this door on the north now. And in here, we see a new character. Who, uh, sorry, I have sickness. Uh, come closer. Okay, so uh, what's up? You cute little human. Husband told me you come. You want to look at Mira, huh? My husband found it, but a pretty thing. But since I get Mira, I get sick, and then bad monsters appear. So many bad things happen since Mira. So we lock a bedroom on third floor where it hangs. Wait, I'll tell you where key is. You got the map of the mansion. So this is our dungeon map. It's handed to us. Uh, you can't skip this. <laughs> but it's kind of cool. Uh, fever makes head blurry, but it probably here in the room marked by the symbol. So uh, I guess that big red dot's where we need to be going then. But right now, I can't even get up. Would you bring it to me? Start with door right there. 
And she points out the first door that we need to go through, which is this eastern one here. But I'm going to save that for next time. I just wanted to get you guys introduced to what the Snow Peak Ruins are all about. So in the next part, we'll venture into Snow Peak Ruins and see if we can't find our first mirror shard. So until then, thank you guys for watching, and I'll see you next time.